All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to upgrade the SSD or the hard drive and replace the battery on this 13 inch MacBook Air model A1466 mid 2014. So you're going to need a Pentalobe uh, 1.2 or P5 screwdriver, and then you also need a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. All right, so first we're gonna use the Pentalobe uh, screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. Um, it looks like some screws are missing here. Uh, but anyways, you want to remove all the screws and keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that is I put the flat side down on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So this rectangular pattern, I will just remove the screws and put them in that pattern. All right. So let's go ahead and remove all these screws. The two in the back middle here are longer than the rest. Right. So keep that in mind if you do remove these. Okay. It is missing the two corner screws back there. All right. Make sure, of course, that your MacBook has been shut down properly so that it doesn't turn itself on. All right? You want to make sure that there's no power running to it while you work on it. Okay. Let's go ahead and get all these screws out. All right, last one. I'm most likely going to have to clean this out inside. So let's see here. Once you remove all the screws, you'll go back here, use your fingers, and just pull this up. A lot of times it'll have a little um, latch here or um, thing there, so you just pull it and it will unclip. So here you can see this. It didn't unclick, so I guess this part's probably damaged. But uh, it's a little dusty, not too bad, but I'll clean it up anyways. So let me do that and I'll be back. All right, I'm back, so we clean this out. All right, so... Placing the battery and the SSD on this is pretty simple. We're gonna switch over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver, and we're gonna remove the five screws holding the battery in place, all right? So there's a little trick to removing the battery. Again, you wanna keep all these screws in order. Okay. this video helps you make sure to like subscribe and share my channel with others so that they can also learn how to upgrade and repair their devices if it helps you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel so that i can continue making these videos for a living these are customer computer repairs but of course as i continue to make um, it easier for people to learn how to fix their own devices i get actually less work anyways um, when you get the battery out you want to get your fingers under and you want to lift the front of the battery up slightly like this Okay, just like that. And then you grab this tab and you kind of just wiggle it as you pull it and it should pop out easily just like that. Okay, we're gonna also take out the T5 or Torx 5 screw from here. Normally if you mess with these other components after removing the battery, you want to actually open up the computer and then press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds. But if you're just doing the SSD, it's not really a big deal. So we're gonna skip over that. And let's go ahead and remove this um, screw. And then we're gonna pull the SSD up slightly like this and then pull it back. Um, there's one thing to know, if you're upgrading your SSD and you wanna migrate all your original stuff over, you should um, create a time machine backup first. That's the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, um, you'll need an adapter to connect this to your computer and migrate everything over. You could also manually copy what you want to an external drive and then just do a clean install of the OS. Anyways, the customer brought this one terabyte SSD in here so it says before installing the drive um, to make sure it has uh, OS 10.13 or later. So I checked they had Catalina on here, so it should be okay. All right, so let's get the drive in there. Just get it at an angle like that, push that in. All right, and get that all the way in. All right, and there we go. All right, get the screw. This is uh, one of the OWC SSDs, all right? They're upgrading to a one terabyte. Okay, so I don't know, this SSD seems a little crooked to me, but it is what it is. All right, there we go. Get that in. Put the old SSD in the packaging here to give back to them. All right, and then we're gonna get the replacement battery and swap that out as well. Okay. So let's get the battery out. 
So the battery has this tape stuff on it. Um, we're gonna peel that off, but for now we'll leave it on. We'll peel it off once we get it all seated. So just like before, you kind of wanna hold the front side slightly up when you go to put this in. Get the connector lined up, okay. And then pinch the two together, just like this. All right, you don't wanna just push it that way because otherwise sometimes if the soldering's not good here, it will rip that connector off the board. Okay, so this, connector is a little bit longer than it should be so it needs to be bent slightly just like this okay so the customer brought me these parts so hopefully they're okay I don't know I haven't used this battery before I've seen this brand before so it's probably okay all right let's go ahead and get the five screws that hold the battery back into place all right pretty simple and straightforward all right and once we get all of that back in, we'll just put back the bottom cover. All right, last two screws here. Um, there is one more step after replacing all these hardware. You do want to do a PRAM and SMC reset. I'm going to be doing a clean install, so I have an external boot of High Sierra. And I'm going to boot that. Okay, let's go ahead and peel this sticker off now. When you peel this off, you actually want to roll it back. You don't want to pull it straight up because it can separate layers in the battery if you do it that way. So it's best to roll it back like this. Okay, there we go. Let's stick this on their old battery. Okay, and then we'll give that back to them. All right. So we got that. Let's go ahead and close the cover. Again, we will have to do a PRAM and SMC reset. They had this USB thing here. I'll just put that back in there. We're going to switch back over to the Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. And we'll just get all these screws back in. All right. Again, if this video helps you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. All right. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel so I can continue making these videos for a living. And we'll get all these in. All right, so once we get all these screws in, we're gonna power it up. We'll do the PRAM and SMC reset. Usually I'll do the SMC reset first. Okay. In. There we go. All right. So let's flip this over. I'm gonna plug the power cord in. All right. When you plug this in, if the battery is not fully charged, it should go to orange. Usually, when they sell batteries, they don't sell them fully charged, so it should go to orange. Yep. All right. So what we're gonna do for the SMC reset is Control Option Shift on the left side, and then the power button. The light should go green, and then back to orange. That's how you know you did it right. It's booting itself, which I didn't want it to do, so I held the option key so that way it went to the boot option menu. Let's do it again. So I'm gonna do the SMC reset. All right, control option shift, power, it turns off. Now I'm gonna do PRAM reset. So command option PNR, just hold that and the volume should reset to the maximum volume. So you'll hear the boot chime. Max volume if it's done right, there you go. I'm gonna hold the option key because I wanna go back to the boot options. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get my external boot. I have High Sierra, I think the other one's Sierra. So we're gonna load the High Sierra one. And then we're gonna use this to go to the app store. So I'm gonna boot this. All right, and it should, there we go. So it shows my High Sierra drive. I'm gonna to go to High Sierra. I load it. Right. Wait for this to load. <clears throat> Most people won't have this kind of way to do it, so there's not really a point for me to show this. Um, yeah, normally you'd want to do the, what do you call, so password. I just put my password as password for this. Um, so here I have all these other install options. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click go. Why is it showing the keyboard thing is weird. That's kind of strange. 
Okay, that's weird that it's not detecting the keyboard right. That's really strange. Anyways, let's go to um, Go in the top here, and then we're going to Utilities. I'm going to go to Disk Utility here. In the Disk Utility, I see the Aura uh, 1 terabyte SSD, and it shows it was formatted to OWC Aura N2. I'm going to erase it, and I'm just going to call it Macintosh. Uh, hard drive HD. All right, so we're going to format this. I'm going to change it to APFS because we're going to put a newer OS on there and then I'm going to erase that. So there we go. Sorry, I'm not doing like a good view of the screen, but hopefully you guys get what I'm doing. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go to the App Store. I don't know if this one supports Big Sur or not. Let me try. So we're going to go to the App Store. And then we're going to go to Big, oops, Big Sur. And the keyboard works fine, so I don't know why it's ha having a weird issue detecting it. So I have it already in, uh, downloaded, so I'm going to open it, and then hopefully it will let me install it. We'll continue here. We'll agree. I agree. All right. Show all disks. We're going to install to the Macintosh HD. It's asking for my password again. Password. There we go, and now it's installing. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna let this run and then it will go through. It'll restart a few times and keep installing. And then it will ask you to create your account. Um, when you, if you're doing this kind of thing, which most people probably wouldn't know how to do this, basically I installed the operating system to an external drive before um, with another Mac. And that's how I created this bootable drive. But anyways, we're gonna let this run and then it's gonna, basically just ask you to um, do the regular setup, create your account and everything. So that's pretty much all there is to this. Hopefully this video helped you guys again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.